All right, folks, how's it going today? Welcome back to the channel. Today I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about a game that I absolutely adore and I have loved ever since the Sega Genesis has ever even came out. And that is Gyarus. A lot of people pronounce this game differently. To me, it's Gyarus and it's a powerful beast. It even says so on the front of it with eight megs of power. Anyway, this was really the game that got me into shooters, period. And I mean, and it got me into them deep. I absolutely do, absolutely adore the shooting genre. This game especially, as you can see, I have it on the Evercade Versus as well. If you guys aren't familiar with this, this is a little system, takes these little cartridges. This one is the renovation collection I have here, and it does have Gyarus on it and some of the Valus games, but cool little side note if you've never checked out the Evercade stuff. I also have the ROM dumped on my Mega SD, so, I don't like using my original cart that much. I don't want to wear the pins out on it, so I mainly play it through the Mega SD a lot. Probably the proudest thing about having the original cartridge is I still have the original poster for it. I don't like opening this thing up. I know it's not that big a deal, but finding stuff like this complete still in the box is hard to come by. And this poster here, you hardly ever see it still in the original cart, and I don't like opening it up because I don't want to get any kind of fold lines on it. How this has survived since I was a teenager, and I'm stinking 49 years old now, I do not know, but this is definitely one of the pride of my fleet, just having this stinking poster still around. But anyway, about the game itself, this game is a side-scrolling shooter. It's not the most fast-paced shooter in the world you'll ever play, but the screen itself is a big part of what you traverse in this game. And by what I mean by that is, like in the beginning entrance, a ton of stage, a bunch of asteroids flying around and stuff. As you get deeper in the game, you're flying through caverns and stuff, having to dodge stuff. Um, you get to one stage in the game and there's swinging hooks and all kinds of stuff you have to avoid. So you have to be precise. Now in that precision, going through all these obstacles, that is where the one function of the game I really like is you can control your speed. It's got a, uh, a low, a medium, and a high. Most shooters have this that are side-scrolling, but the one benefit of this game is you get it right at the start. Whereas, say, in the Gradius series, you know, you have to get power-ups, increase it, and all this. You always have it in this game, and you just switch between it with, I don't remember what button it is on the controller, but you just choose the speed you need for the situation you're in. One of the coolest things I dig about this game is it, you have the little ball like you have in R-Type that connects to the front or the back of your ship. And this thing is called the Taz. The unique thing about Gaius is you can shoot this Taz off and latch on to enemies. And when you latch on to enemies, it absorbs their firepower. You take on that firepower. Now, as you go through the game, you can mix and match this, all that kind of job but you'll learn what enemies are best to absorb from, and it helps you getting through each stage. Each, it's not a one weapon fits all kind of game. Say like um, R-Type Final Series. When you get the laser in that series, you can kind of go through the whole game with that laser if you can keep it and do some pretty massive damage. On this game, it doesn't work that way. You very much have to change up your weaponry a lot to, um, excuse me, to suit the situation you're in. So with that, there is a cheat for the game that you can do to get the T-Braster. So if you fire your Taws off at nothing, just blank empty screen, you can, I think it's six times or seven, I can't remember, but try six first. You shoot it off six times and don't hit anything, and then back off and shoot it when it has to connect with an enemy. When it connects with an enemy and you get the tree, tree braster back then it fires um or the taws excuse me you get the taws back then you get the t uh, braster that thing is an auto seeking weapon where it seeks out the enemy shoots it so anyway you can hang in the back of the screen and just hold down the button and this thing will wipe enemies out it's almost cheating in a way and it'll help you get a little bit deeper in the game now, in saying that, what this weapon will not do is it will not lock on to bosses. So that is where it's evened out. You may think, oh, you can't do that. That's a cheat. You're going through the game, you know. You're not playing it straight up. 
And you would be correct in that. You know, I, I would admit that. This game is tough as nails, though. And you'll do anything you can to try to get a leg up in this game. But the thing about it is, like I just said with the bosses, by the time you get to the bosses and you try this, it will not lock on. So you just kind of... It, it, become, it becomes more of a game of skill at that point, and you have to get in front of the boss, and sometimes you just have one of those heat-seeking things hitting the boss, and it'll take forever to kill it. But it's still a great, great, great weapon to get. Now, in saying this, when you first start the game, you can fire off the T or the Taz in the bottom right-hand corner and get this power up. As you go through each level, you lose the weapon. So you have to find a sweet spot again to fire this thing off six times without an enemy hitting you or blowing you up before you're able to get back to attach it to another enemy as it comes. So it, it's very much a, a thing of strategy and uh, it makes the game all that more difficult. But I love it. Um, one thing I really love about the game also is the branching paths. You don't take a branching path and it give you a different end result. It's just, say, at the beginning of the game, you're flying along, you're about to go into a cave. Well, if you go up, you can go above the cave where there's a tree line and all this kind of job and uh, the skyline and, you know, fight your enemy there. Or if you choose to stay down, you can go through the bottom of the cave and you're, of course, in a cave going through this cavern shooting enemies. A lot of the game is like that. You go on a water stage, you can either, and it's like an, an, an Arctic, uh, Arctic, excuse me, stage. You can blow through ice things and go through these caverns you create and all that, or you can stay down below and just go through an open area that's not created. Usually your path of hardest resistance, you're going to get the most benefit from. If you take the easy path, then usually there's not as many power-ups, there's not shields and stuff like that. Speaking of shields, that's one great thing about this game. The shields last a while. You can take up to five hits, I think, before your shield's totally gone, so it can come in very handy getting through tight situations and most of the time they give you a shield in this game it's kind of a precursor to what crap is about to come so you know take that with a grain of salt but the replayability of this game is huge i have been playing this game since i was 13 14 15 years old and it's still as fun today as it's ever been to me i adore it i bought a t-shirt of it the other day that should be here one day next week i mean it's it's my all-time favorite shooter i highly suggest you check it out if you try to pick it up on original car, I don't think it's too awful bad. I mean, I know it's like a hundred and something bucks, but I don't think it breaks 150. It still might be pretty low, but you could always do the ROM route and you could always do the Evercade route. Evercade system itself will cost you a hundred bucks. This cart's 20 bucks. It's readily available on Amazon, so that's a great way to play it. Or just emulate the crap out of it on something. If you have a Raspberry Pi or any other emulation device, I promise you, under the Genesis or Mega Drive collection, this game's in there. So, uh, anyway, that's it, guys. I just wanted to gush on my favorite shooter for a minute. And uh, definitely, definitely give this one a try if you dig shooters at all. Appreciate you guys' support. Have a good one.